So how does one answer the question, how expensive is it to live in Hawaii? Ah, it's not that bad. We just go shop Costco and Ross, so, you know, we good. I think the best way to explain how expensive it is to live in Hawaii is to talk about cost of living, which unfortunately in most traditional economic measures is often underestimated due to actual costs of basic needs and the rate that they increase. So in this video, let's go over real life budgets for living in Hawaii as a way to explain the cost of living. And by the end of this video, you'll have a general understanding of what things could cost for your household size and living situation. These real life budgets were put together by the Aloha United Way, and I appreciate their ALICE report, which highlights asset limited, income constrained employed households who earn too much to receive federal assistance, but not enough to afford basic household necessities. Basically, people who are lower middle class and they're stuck. Like they just can't seem to get ahead and they're always treading water. And why this is important is that in Hawaii, 33% of the population falls under this category, which when you combine with the 9% of households that are living below the federal poverty line means that approximately 42% of Hawaii households are struggling. And I know that it doesn't look like it sometimes. Hey, you wanna check out my new truck, bro? Mean cuz. But at the end of this video, I wanna talk about why it doesn't seem like people are struggling in Hawaii, even if the numbers tell a different story. In full transparency, our household doesn't fall under this Alice category, but we're just above this group, which means that if anything bad were to happen, we'd be right there. And I'll post a link to the report in the description below if you'd like to check it out for more information. First, let's talk about the survival budget. The Alice household survival budget is the minimum estimate of the total cost of household essentials, such as housing, childcare, food, transportation, healthcare, technology, taxes, and miscellaneous. Basically, this is the bare minimum that you'll need to survive in Hawaii. So taking a look at single adults, to me, the housing estimate in this budget seems a little bit low, so I'm gonna assume that this individual has some sort of roommate. Oh yeah, bruh, I stay renting one house with five other guys and one cat named Moku. And better yet, for a single adult, housing costs can be zero if you live at home with your parents. Hey, I'm not living with them, bruh, they stay living with me. And one thing to take note of in this budget is the annual total salary and expected hourly wage. The minimum wage in Hawaii is $10.10, which is why a lot of people often work multiple jobs. And remember, this is the survival budget, so this is just the bare bottom. I personally don't think you'll be able to survive on this budget in Hawaii very long. I mean, maybe a few years if you bring in some savings, but after that, you're probably going to want to leave. Two adults and no kids. Looking at this budget for two adults, things are still pretty tough. However, there are a lot of shared costs that I think can help bring the cost of living down. Housing is actually very affordable if you split it two ways between two working adults. I mean, $47,000 a year is quite attainable. I think the biggest variable will be the food and miscellaneous money. I mean, you think with two people, the chances of going out to eat are higher. And so you have to consider the wants and needs of two people for non-essential spending. And so what, what you like eat tonight? What you mean you don't know? <laughs> Fine then, we're going zippies. It seems to me that the ultimate sweet spot for living in Hawaii is this two adults, no kid situation. And I can just say that anecdotally, this is one of the more common living situations in Hawaii and I can definitely see why. I mean, with two working adults, a lot of the larger expenses can be split like housing and healthcare. And with no kids, there's no need to worry about childcare and school costs, which are pretty expensive. And I think this is why we often see non-military couples with no kids move to Hawaii. But then I kind of wonder what happens if they decide to have a kid. From what I've seen after having a kid, it's often difficult to decide whether or not to stay in Hawaii because of the childcare costs and the lack of family help. And even for some local families who do have access to family help, the costs are often so high that moving to the mainland with kids is the best option. Two adults and two school age children. So while I only have a family of three, this is actually a really good heads up into what we can look forward to if we decide to grow our family. And again, housing costs seem pretty low according to this budget. I mean, I understand that these are statewide numbers, but finding a two bedroom for $1,600 to me is pretty low. If I had to guess, at least in the areas that I would want to live in, it's gonna be over $2,000 a month for sure. 
I also want to note that the child care costs are way higher for kids in pre-K. And this is something that I'm learning quickly as we're trying to scout out preschools. And when I look at this food budget, I think, oh, that's a lot per month for food. And I think that's why a lot of families, especially the bigger families, they get that Costco membership. Looking at the annual total that you need, it doesn't actually seem too bad because you have two working adults. And again, if you have grandparents, that would basically cut your child care to zero. Kapunas. Now I want to quickly share this budget for those interested in what a kapuna or a senior might need to survive in Hawaii. It's basically a modified budget similar to a single adult, but there's less expenses in food and transportation, but higher healthcare costs. But the thing is in looking at how low this is, I really hope that there are kapuna at this income level trying to survive. I mean, it just seems like a tough way to live during those last remaining years. But let's say that you don't want to just survive. You actually want to thrive in Hawaii. The Alice Household Stability Budget is more sustainable and includes a savings category which can be used as an emergency fund, college savings, or to even buy a home, I guess. And so I want to just quickly share the stability budgets for a single adult and a family of four just so that you can see what it may take to have a little bit of financial freedom in Hawaii. And what's alarming is that this doesn't account for things like student loans and other expenses that are pretty common. And so you can see why it seems to be so hard to get ahead in Hawaii. It's just the numbers don't add up. Now I wanna kinda of talk about what I think masks the real cost because I've often wondered why if things are so hard for so many in Hawaii, it seems like there's a lot of people that are living up a pretty good lifestyle, at least according to external appearances. Hey hon, you want to see new Tesla? Bro, they still eating out again. Hey, they're going out lawning this weekend. How can? And some may actually earn enough to afford this type of lifestyle comfortably. But if it's true that 42% of households are in this Alice category or below, how are they able to afford this? So I wanna talk about what may mask the high cost of living in Hawaii, especially for locals. I believe it's the high percentage of multi-generational housing in Hawaii. In 2018, 7.7% of Hawaii households were multi-generational, the highest in the nation and twice the national average. And that means that you got three or more generations living in the same household. So you got grandma, grandpa, you got the parents, and you got the kids all in the same house. And this isn't just some adult kid living with their parents. This is an adult kid who has a family living with their parents. And yes, it's a cultural thing that makes families close, but it's also a survival tactic that helps keep costs down. I mean, imagine starting a family and living with your parents. If you live with your parents, you have no rent. You have no childcare costs. You have no electricity or water costs. You have a shared food budget and a shared technology budget. I mean, based on that alone, you've probably eliminated most of the budgetary items that stretch most Hawaii households. And that doesn't even factor in home ownership and the passing on of property from one generation to the next. Because inheriting a home is basically free and I think that you're gonna find that most future generations, they're gonna find themselves owning a home through this method. I mean, mom and dad die and somebody gotta get the house. And in a lot of ways, this is both good and bad for locals. It gives local families an advantage in surviving in Hawaii compared to their maybe mainland peers because they can take advantage of the lower or the elimination of housing costs, which account for almost half of one's expected monthly expenses. However, I can see how this situation could cause some to be financially illiterate in the sense that they would never really need to budget in the first place because it always seems like they have enough money because their major expenses have been shared. The result could be a husband and wife, both working with two kids, living with the wife's parents, probably own a truck and SUV, eating out every other day, buying the newest cell phone, shopping for clothes every weekend, and they have absolutely no savings. I mean, how can this be? And I hope that doesn't sting anybody there. I'm not really here to tell others how they should manage their finances. That's their responsibility. It just seems like it's too bad because they could really do something great with their finances in that living situation, but they're just never really forced to learn because they don't have to. So I hope this video was helpful in kind of understanding the cost of living. And again, these numbers were provided by Aloha United Way. You can check out their report if you're curious on what you need to survive in Hawaii. Thanks for watching and 
Aloha.